Here are five times I almost gave up on a DIY repair and seriously considered taking the car in or as David put it in a comment that cracked me up recently, I wanted to set the car on fire. I'm sharing this because I learned valuable lessons from those encounters and you may find this helpful as well. Now let's get this. Removing parts for the first time on a high mileage engine can often require a bit of skill. And we kick off with my frustrating experience trying to remove the variable timing control solenoid on my 2003 Honda Accord which at the time had about 200,000 miles. The o-ring on the solenoid was leaking and needed to be changed. I made two separate attempts over an 18 month period trying to remove the solenoid and even though I could remove the single bolt holding the part on each occasion, the solenoid just won't budge from the cylinder head. If you're removing a VTC or a variable valve timing solenoid, you definitely want to resist the urge to pull on the plastic connector of the solenoid. These break off quite easily and you'll be in bigger problems when this happens. Finally on my third attempt, I was able to use a long needle nose plier wedged against the valve cover for leverage and remove the solenoid. The lesson here my golden rule for DIY repairs is to always take a break when you're at your wit's end and also be sure to use the right tool. Also depending on the design of the solenoid you're trying to remove, for example on some Toyotas and Lexus, you may get better results by using a flat tip screwdriver instead of pliers. Do some research online and find out what works best for your engine. While I had no problems breaking away all the bolts and nuts, maneuvering the loosened rear motor mount on this 2008 Toyota Matrix was entirely a different story. I had to take a couple of rest breaks as leaning over to the rear of the engine on any car usually sets your waist on fire. Eventually through patience and raising the jack underneath the oil pan a bit higher, I was able to get enough clearance and as I explained in the video, the technique was to tilt the mount towards the driver's side pulling the stubborn transmission cable over it. Gosh, man. That took some fishing. Removing the lower radiator quick connector from the thermostat housing nearly had me on this 2003 Honda Accord which at the time had about 250,000 miles. This radiator hose had never been removed and I was basically just trying to replace the thermostat as part of preventive maintenance. However, despite releasing the locking tab and pulling on this hose with my two hands, it simply refused to move an inch. I was almost at the verge of calling it a day when I just decided to use an extension wedged between the radiator quick connect hose and the engine support system to pry it out. The hose finally came loose much to my relief. <sighs> my goodness. So that's out. Great. And for me the lesson here is that a little bit of ingenuity always helps when you're doing DIY because some techniques and know-how are not going to be covered even in the factory service manual. While I was able to film and share the video on how to replace the impact sensors on a 2017 Accord, removing the left impact sensor delayed the whole video by about 3 hours and that was because the torque screw that was holding it in place was pretty rusted, the head ended up stripping. Luckily I still had my stripped bolt or screw extractor set and although I spent spent an hour looking for this because it's been a long time since I used it. I was finally able to find it and get the stripped bolt out. There are just some tools that should be in the toolbox of every DIYer and a broken bolt or stripped screw extractor set is one of those. You never really know the day that you need it but I promise you that this quickly pays for itself on its first use. This fifth problem nearly had me take this car to a mechanic. The VTEC solenoid assembly on my 2003 Accord was leaking oil and although I had replaced the strainer for the assembly which had a cracked seal, the leak continued. I subsequently ordered the o-ring for the VTEC oil pressure switch and went ahead to replace that as well. At this point I had replaced all the seals or o-rings that are associated with this assembly but yet the leak kept on happening. It was at this point that I finally decided to start the car and make a thorough inspection of the VTEC assembly while the engine was running and then I found the source of the leak. Although the VTEC switch didn't throw any codes, the seal inside of it had failed and it was actually leaking at this junction where the plastic body meets the metal part. I still have that same VTEC oil pressure switch with me today as a memorial to the fact that a keen sense of observation may be all that you need to crack that nagging car problem that has been with you for a while. Have you had any DIY experiences that nearly brought you to your limits? Hit me up in the comments and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace!